I love maps, especially historical ancient ones. Why? There's just something about the rich illustrations and intricate details that catches my eye and sparks my curiosity. I can almost feel my feet wandering between destinations, picture the places that appear on the map and smell the scents of the streets while I encounter other wanderers on my journey. As educators, we hope to create for our learners that magical sense of discovery, that spark of connection, that drives them to dig deeper, to expand their horizons and to delve into a process of meaningful learning. But how? At the National Library of Israel, we hope to facilitate such engaging experiences by using primary sources, authentic first-hand documentation of historical events. These treasures include manuscripts, documents, maps, recordings, and other items of unique national, historic, and cultural significance for Israel and the Jewish people around the world. So, how can we expose learners to these rich and diverse treasures and encourage them to engage with their cultural heritage? How can we help learners acquire knowledge and also develop crucial research skills, such as finding and organizing data, asking questions and analyzing information, tools that will serve them in many realms in the future? How can we empower them throughout the learning process to reflect on their role in their community and encourage them to be proactive in forming the future of their culture, to add their chapter to the story of the Jewish people? Let's start with their interests, sports, politics, consuming content on the internet. Connecting learners to history can be achieved by honing an interest they already have, which becomes the portal for further learning. For example, students who love sports may choose to research the topic of women in sports throughout modern Jewish history. Their initial interest in sports can serve as a portal to deepening and broadening their knowledge about this interesting chapter in Jewish history. Choice is key in empowering students to take responsibility and ownership throughout the process of inquiry. The starting point of any research project is the task of choosing a topic, and it's important they decide what they want to learn about. This way, the entire project is informed by their preferences and interests. Then, the true significance of learning becomes not only what new knowledge they have gained or skills they have mastered, but also how they have channeled what was offered to them in the best way in order to create a meaningful and engaging experience for themselves. I want to outline four main stages of learning with primary sources that you can implement in any given lesson or use as the foundation for a longer project-based learning process. We start by observing what's our first impression of the primary source? What details draw our attention and spark our curiosity? What do we notice about the item in terms of language, color, design? Then we dig a little deeper. We start analyzing the item, inquiring about its purpose, its audience, in order to understand it better and appreciate the broader context in which it was created. Now we connect this item to our lives. In what ways is the idea or explanation behind this primary source still relevant today? Can we think of similar items that we're familiar with from our lives? If this was created in our day and age, how would it be similar or different? We reflect on what resonates with us. We find personal relevance and ultimately forge an emotional connection. Now it's our turn to create something new, to contribute our own input, express ourselves and offer a personal interpretation. We share what we have learned with others and take part in a conversation. The element of personal expression and interpretation is a critical element of taking ownership over one's learning. The creative product can be seen not only as an expression of the learning process, but also as part of it, as it involves learning new information, synthesizing data, and constructing it into a comprehensive product. Creating is an opportunity for the learners to crystallize their understanding, as well as add a personal layer and forge a stronger connection to what they have learned. Moreover, the creations can also resonate with others and spark further dialogue and learning. Not sure you have the time to dig deep into primary sources? Here are some additional ways of using them in the classroom to enhance and enrich any topic. Use a primary source to create a class discussion, Talmud page style, where every learner writes questions and comments about the source and then responds to what others have written as well. 
Present a primary source that helps students connect to the emotional layer of historical moments. Compare different types of sources and their impact on their audience. Guide a creative writing exercise based on primary sources. Compare different newspaper articles that report the same event or relate differently to the same topic. Have students write a reflective piece based on an image or photograph as they connect to what the people in it might have been feeling at that moment. Use a primary source to expose the personal angle, the mundane details of grand historical events. What are the benefits of using primary sources in the classroom, according to teachers? או סתם פריט שהתלמידים לא מכירים, כן? סתם איזושהי מפה שהתלמידים לא ראו בספרי הלימוד. אז עצם השימוש בפריטים הוא מאוד מאוד משמעותי לתלמידים. אני בתור חוקר ובתור בן אדם שאוהב מפות, אני רוצה להביא לתלמידים שלי משהו שאני מאוד התרגשתי ממנו. כשאתה לוקח באמת פריט שהוא כל כך יפה וכל כך יכול להוסיף, הוא גם צבעוני, הוא אותנטי, הוא, הוא מיוחד, התלמידים מרגישים במורה שהדבר הזה מדבר אליו, אז השיעור הופך להיות אחר. פריטי מקור של הספרייה הלאומית הם אוצר למורים. אנחנו המורים מנסים להסביר לתלמידים הרבה הרבה דברים דרך מילים. זה קשה לתלמיד להרגיש רק דרך מילים או רק דרך דמיון. פריטי מקור עושים את זה בקלות וביעילות גדולה הרבה יותר. וזה ממש מאפשר ליצור איזשהו רצף או איזושהי השוואה שהיא הרבה יותר ברורה בין מה שהיה אז לבין מה שהיה היום ואיפה אני ביחס לזה. המפגש עם פריט מקור כזה יכול להעלות בתלמידים המון המון שאלות. איך אפשר לחגוג את חג הסוכות במזג אוויר כל כך עורפי? איך זה בכלל לחגוג את חג הסוכות באוכלוסייה עוינת? נראה לי כדאי בשיעור מהסוג הזה לדבר על ההבדלים בין הסוכות כאן ועכשיו לבין הסוכות לפני 100 שנה. אפשר בהקשר הזה לראות איך התלמידים מתעוררים לחשוב על שאלות שהם לא חשבו עליהן קודם. השימוש בפרטי מקור מאפשר לתלמידים לפתח פרספקטיבה לגבי החיים שלהם עצמם על ידי התבוננות במציאות שהם לא הכירו ולא דמיינו שקיימת בזמנים ובמקומות אחרים. In summary, when we use primary sources in a way that brings the past to life, that exposes the learners to the personal stories behind the grand historical events and gives them an authentic glimpse into dramatic moments from the past. Once a source comes to life, it creates a spark of connection between past and present. This connection is possible and amplified when we help learners discover how relevant and resonant the past can be. Then we not only bring the past to life, but also bring the past into our learners' lives. Then we explore the ways in which the past can teach us more about ourselves, about the community we live in, and inform us on how to deal with dilemmas and questions we grapple with in the present. For more resources and ideas, check out our website and our Facebook page. Feel free to be in touch for more guidance.